back today. I think because I've already had one big coffee and now I'm having another one. And I worked out this morning and I haven't done that in a long time. What's up? Welcome back to my channel. Today, I just want to do a little Q&A with you guys. I know a lot of you have asked me a bunch of questions and I just haven't had the time to answer them yet. So here we go. Yeah, I'm going to talk about myself. I'm going to talk about work away. I'm going to talk about my travel, budgeting, safety, COVID, everything under the sun for solo travel and for volunteering in another country. So let's get into it, shall we? Hi, if you're new, I'm Annie. I am 20 years old. I am originally from Arkansas, but I live in New York City where I am a dancer, singer, and actress. And I am also a health coach in training. So I'm in a program right now training to be a health coach. So hit me up for all your health needs. Over quarantine, I found myself back in Arkansas. There was no theater, there was no nothing. I was a dancer my whole life, so I had never known life without dance. So taking dance away from me really opened up a whole new world of opportunities, and I found myself really itching for travel. I got online, started doing some research, and found this thing called Workaway. I found so many different places, and eventually it led up to me going to Guatemala and teaching kids dance there, and having the experiences of a lifetime. It was incredible. And I also have a day in my life on my YouTube channel, so check that out. Yeah, that's a little bit about me. I just was sick and tired of waiting around and I needed to leave and I needed to do something and I needed to do something cheap. And so I found myself in Guatemala. Why did I pick Guatemala? I didn't really pick Guatemala. I just wanted to go anywhere. So what I did, I went to the handy dandy little website called Skyscanner. So basically what you can do on Skyscanner, you can literally search anywhere in the world and see where it is cheapest to fly to. I would put in where I was flying from to anywhere. The key is to be flexible with your dates if you want a cheap plane ticket. Buy them one way because you never know your travel plans. One way is always the way to go. And once you search, you can find where all of the cheapest places to go to. Most of the time, the cheapest places to fly from the US are South America, Central America. Basically, I just went through this list and I saw the cheapest places to fly. So I just had that in mind. And then I went over to Workaway. What is Workaway? Workaway is a platform that allows members to find thousands of different volunteer options in exchange for free lodging and free food. Workaway's requirements are 25 hours of work a week and you get free housing and you get free food. In my case, I only worked 15 to 20 hours a week, so I only got free lodging. So it really depends on your requirements with your actual host. If you type in workaway.info on Google or on your phone. There's also an app on your phone. Um, I can show you guys that as well. So you go to Workaway and you click join now. You can join as a Workaway or a host. Obviously, we're joining as a Workaway. -er. So if you want to travel as a couple or friends, it's 56 per year, which is 28 per Workaway. -er. And then if you want to sign up as a single person, it's $44 per year. You would click on join now and then you would create your account, username, email, password, date of birth. And then you would go and you would set up your profile. So I'm gonna show you my profile to give you kind of an example of what I was doing. I put, I'm traveling to Cambodia, Costa Rica, Guatemala, Thailand, US. You, you can be very broad with where you're traveling to if you don't really have an idea of where you wanna go. If you have an idea of where you wanna go, great, you put that down. And then I had my travel dates. I had them very broad because I obviously didn't know what I wanted to do. So a lot of this, you can change. You can just kind of make it at first, put it away, come back to it and change. So easy to work, so easy. You can put your status, you can put where you are. When I was in San Marcos, I put where I was. Um, you can also find other workawayers on Workaway that are in your area. So that is also fun. So then you would add a description about yourself. So here's mine. For your description, I know it sounds so cliche, but just be you. Just, you know, talk about where you're from, what you do, where you've worked, what are your hobbies? You don't have to have anything big and exciting. If you like to hike, write that down. I love to hike. Or if you like to swim, you like to swim. Like just like put down your little hobbies, like arts and crafts, but why you wanna travel, because this is a travel website. What makes you wanna travel? Like, why do you love it? Like, are you organized? Are you type A? Just 
talk about yourself. It's not too hard. It doesn't need to be too long. As you can see, mine's just a couple paragraphs here. So you can like select from all these different things of what you're interested in, what you have knowledge in, what you can teach about, and then more details about your skills. For me, I kind of already talked about my skills, my description, so I kind of just elaborated on it in the details. And just kind of talk about that, your languages, your age, Anything else that you want to put, I mean, mine's very simple. You could definitely do a lot more. I did mine very simple and it worked out for me. So you don't have to have like a crazy long bio or anything. Just be yourself. I would say short and sweet is probably best because I mean, hosts aren't going to want to read 10,000 pages. They want to, you know, see who you are, get the gist of you and see if they want to have you help them or not. There's some more information. And then I have about four photos and they're all of my face. They're all pretty close up natural. I didn't really want to put any edits on them just to really show my face, show my personality. Photos, honestly, that's that's what's going to help you out. That's kind of the bio. That's kind of how you set it up. You can always, always change it, always edit it. So yeah, so then once I had that set up, it's time to look for hosts. So you would go and find a host. So you can enter a country anywhere. You can search by keywords. So let's look at Guatemala because that's where I went any country you can think of any type of work you want to do it is on here you just got to keep looking this is the hardest part is researching and finding what you want to do you help us at a hostel in guatemala okay so you want to just work at a hostel let's click on that you can look you can also favorite it so if you want to add it to your host list so you can go back and look at ones that you've already liked and you can like see their ratings, you can see when they were last active. Seeing their last activity is important because if they haven't been active in, you know, a couple months, they're probably not going to respond to you. If they've been active in the last couple of days, they're probably still on the website. They're probably still wanting to find people. Availability is super important because you want to make sure that the host is available at the time you want to go. So for example, these people are available until July, but if you're trying to travel after August, they're not available. They give you a good description. They give you what work is needed. They have photos as well. Um, and then you can go and look at the feedback. Look at the comments, that's important. You can see what other workawayers have said about them and if it was you know, a good fit, if they liked it, what not. This is the hardest part is doing research and finding what you wanna do. And then what I did, I just favorited a bunch of places. And then once I thought I had quite a few places, I went and I looked at my host list and I was like, all right, let's start contacting these people. Now, this is key. Your description and your profile, obviously that is important, but what the hosts are really looking at are the personalized message you are sending to them. I recommend sending a different message to every single post. Obviously, you know, you can have like, a bit of the same thing, but you really want to be specific as to why you're choosing this place to volunteer at rather than another place. So to the place that I went and volunteered, I said, hi there, my name is Annie Nyswanger and I am looking to travel for a month or so starting at the end of February or beginning of March. I have been studying to be a musical theater performer and have danced pretty much my whole life and share a huge passion for the arts. I have also been a nanny for the past couple of years and absolutely adore kids and would love to help you out with yours, whether that be teaching them dance, singing with them, or working on their schoolwork. I'm very outgoing, responsible, bubbly, and adventurous. That's where a great experience would be a dream come true for me. So you look at what they want. So as in my case, for this host, they wanted people to work with their kids. I dance, sing, and act, so I could obviously teach. So I wanted to say, hey, this is what I can do for you guys, and this is why I wanna come here, because I see that you guys are into the arts. I am as well. There's our commonalities. I just say a little bit about me. I explain what I wanna do, when I wanna come, and then they contact me back and they were like, hey, sounds great, we were, we were super interested. Let me tell you about the replies though. Did you wanna contact quite a few because you're not gonna get a lot of responses. Like just telling you now, it's gonna take some time because there's so many people on this website. These hosts are looking through applications so many a day that some people are not gonna respond to you reach out to maybe 10 places. And then if they don't respond to you within the first few weeks, reply to some more. It also depends on when you wanna go. Workaway is super flexible as well. Like if you're trying to go somewhere like in two weeks, you're definitely gonna find hosts that want you in that short span of time. Just look at their availability and that can help you decide where you wanna go. Cause there are a lot of people that do like last minute workaways. 
um, on here as well. Make sure you actually want to work there. A lot of these places, the requirement is like a month minimum. So you're gonna be there for a while. So you gotta make sure you actually want to do the work. So once you set up an account, you set up your profile, you do your research and you start applying to places and contacting them and sending them personalized messages, you wait for the responses. When you get a response, you want to talk with them. Get WhatsApp, that's how most people on WorkAway communicate. Send them a message on there and set up a time to FaceTime or talk on the phone. I cannot recommend that enough. I think that is so important. So you can hear their voices, you can see their faces, get a feel for who these people are and who you're gonna be working with because you don't wanna go in blind. So for me personally, we FaceTimed and then I texted my hosts nonstop until my trip. I was asking them questions all the time. Hosts love if you're connecting with them before your arrival because they know that you are dedicated, you're serious about coming, you're not gonna be flaky. I love WorkAway, so worth the membership money. And then you use it for the entire year. So if I wanna do another WorkAway at some point in this year, I can do it because I'm already signed up on this website. So that is WorkAway. So now that we've found our WorkAway hosts, let's go back to Skyscanner. So now that you know exactly where you're going and you kind of have an idea of your time, you would go from New York to Guatemala. Flexibility is key. So if you have the month in mind, you can just choose the month and you can search flights. And from there, you can see what days have the cheapest flights. There you go. So in that, and you can see like the whole calendar. It's really, really, really helpful. You can also look at different months, see what's cheapest. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Make sure you have your passport if you're traveling out of the country. Make sure you get travel insurance. I had travel insurance. My hosts helped me arrange a private car, which was more expensive. It was like 70 US dollars, but it just made me feel safer. And they had helped me set it up and it was just so much easier. So I was like, you know what? It's worth the money. I had a tour company they picked me up from the airport and they took me in a private car three hours to the lake and it was super easy if you just like go online and type in transportation from guatemala city to lake atitlan you can find so many shuttle services private cars best i mean you google's got everything like you'll be set now let's go on to packing so i had a big backpacker backpack I had my camelback and then I had a little duffel and then I had a little this thing, like a little crossbody bag, which I absolutely recommend one of these for travel. These are amazing because they're great if you're scared about getting things stolen because it's on you. It's perfect size to carry all my belongings. Absolutely, 10 out of 10 recommend. This thing was literally, I had it with me 24 seven. I also packed with these packing cubes. These are a lifesaver. Having packing cubes condenses everything so you can fit more stuff. I had way too much stuff. Like, let me just first off tell you, this is too much. I did not need this much. I'm an overpacker. You can pack so much lighter than this. But I mean, this is also like, okay, like I, yeah, it was, it was fine. So I'll share you what my packing list looked like. So basically I had it divided into clothing, shoes, miscellaneous, toiletries, my work and school stuff, documents, and then other. I packed all my clothing. I had this big packing cube and then I had two medium ones and that's what I fit all my clothing in. I brought a lot of neutral colored stuff that I could layer because it was hot during the day and it was cold at night. I had like two of like everything I could think of, like two t-shirts, two tank tops, two nicer shirts, brought a rain jacket, rain jacket just in case. And then for shoes, I brought Chacos, Birkenstocks and tennis shoes. That was all I needed and that was perfect. I mean, I really only wore my Birkenstocks. I wore my tennis shoes like hiking twice. And then actually I never wore my Chacos, but one of my friends wore my Chacos. So I guess I used them all. And I put all my toiletries in like Ziploc bags in case, you know, they like broke on the plane or something. But that also was easy to condense. Really just putting everything in bags just is so easy. And then I had a bunch of miscellaneous stuff. I brought like a portable yoga mat, my portable charger, first aid kit. Bring a first aid kit because you never know what you're going to need. Travel towels. Make sure you get like microfiber towels because you never know, especially with hostels, if you need towels or not. And so just having my own towel was super nice flashlight, aloe vera, sunscreen, bug spray, 
activated charcoal if you're sick, melatonin if I needed that at night, I brought some emergency little gummies if I was feeling sick, bring travel size of everything. I brought big old things that so unnecessary. You can find all of that wherever you're going. It'll save you a lot of room in your bag. And then I brought a computer and my chargers and my notebooks and books that I need for work and school. I brought my documents. I printed out my travel insurance, my immunizations, my confirmation of my flights, my passports. I make copies of those too, just in case. So that was about it for packing. Now let's talk about money. I am the worst at budgeting, so I did not budget very well. Luckily, I had had a lot of money saved up from not doing anything for the past year and just sitting in my house because of COVID. Um, in Guatemala, one US dollar is equal to 7.5 quetzales, so it's pretty cheap in Guatemala. For the entire month, I spent about $1,300. That could have been so much cheaper. I ate out for almost every single dinner. I took a bunch of like classes. I got massages. I did like a palm reading. I shopped. You can definitely do it a lot cheaper. So anyways, I spent about $600 on food. That's eating out and groceries. I spent about 200 on transportation. That is because I bought private cars to and from the airport. You can make that so much cheaper if you just do like shared cars or a bus. I spent about $200 on shopping, $200 on classes, and about $100 on ATM fees. Those ATM fees will get you. So every time you go to the ATM, pull out as much as you can. So every time I'd go to the ATM, I'd pull out about 2,000 quetzales, which is like $150. And don't carry that with you all the time. Put it in like your room, put it like with your passport with all your documents and just take out what you need for the day and put that with you. You never know if you're gonna get robbed. So like I would put all my money aside and I would carry, depending on what I needed, 300 quetzales a day for food. I would make my own breakfast and lunch, and then I would eat out for dinners most of the time. So for my lunch and breakfasts, that would be about $20, $30 for the week for all of that. And then it would be, you know, $10 for a meal at night. And a lot of times I had leftovers or I'd get a drink with my meal. Eating out was pretty cheap. It just, you know, adds up if you're eating out for an entire month, which I did, but it's okay. We had a communal kitchen in the hostel. A lot of hostels have like communal kitchens, which was a lifesaver. I'm so glad I had a kitchen. And so now let's talk about living on the lake. I was in the town of San Marcos. It's pretty touristy, I would say. They definitely rely on the tourists for their economy there. There is so much going on there. There were festivals every weekend. There was always live music. Everything is outside. Literally, I don't think I was inside ever. There's a huge yoga community there. I took Spanish classes from a local woman there. There's so much to do there. COVID regulations. To get to Guatemala, I needed a COVID test. And then to leave Guatemala, I needed to get a COVID test. I got a COVID test in the airport at Guatemala. A lot of countries have COVID tests in the airport for you to get back to the US or wherever you need to go. There was a curfew at 9 p.m. in Guatemala, so everything closed at nine. But besides that, everything else was pretty open. Safety. So for a solo traveler, safety is always key. You can be in danger no matter where you are. It doesn't matter if it's Central America. It doesn't matter if it's the United States. It doesn't matter where it is. You just have to be smart and do your research and know where you are. So before I went, I made sure I did my research and I was staying in a place that was somewhat safe. Yes, people are going to get robbed no matter where you are. Just be smart. I would not walk around by myself at night. I would not do that anywhere. But I did not do that in Guatemala. If I had to leave somewhere at night, I would go with friends. I got catcalled. That's gonna happen no matter what. As a girl, you're gonna get catcalled. You just deal with it and you move on, you ignore it. I never felt unsafe. I felt extremely safe, especially around the lake. I felt so safe. I had a key to lock my van at night. So that made me feel better too. All the rooms, you can lock it. I put all my belongings in a safe space, all my like valuables. But you just gotta be smart. Or having a crossbody bag, that's really smart. So no one can just like take it off your shoulder. Use your common sense. Do your research of the area you're going. Learn Spanish. If you are going to go to another country, don't expect those people to know your language. Yes, most people know English. Respect their culture. 
I went and I did not know very much Spanish and I knew that was a huge mistake. So I immediately got enrolled in Spanish lessons. So I took Spanish lessons at a school in San Marcos and I learned from a woman who had lived in San Marcos her entire life and it was incredible. I learned so much about her, so much about her life and I got to learn some Spanish, which is so important. Please try to learn the language of the place you're staying, especially if it's a long stay. That will just help you understand the culture better, that will help you meet locals. Also, Guatemala, they're very conservative. So if I was gonna go out, I'd make sure my knees are covered and my shoulders are covered. Be respectful. Please, please, please do not impose on the locals. Learn from them. You are in their land, you are learning from them. It's really, really cool when you try to immerse yourself in their culture in the right way without obstructing and just watching and learning. What did I learn? I learned so much. Confidence goes a long way, especially when you're solo traveling. In an area like San Marcos, there's a bunch of backpackers that go through there. It's a very common backpacker hub. A lot of backpackers, if they're not alone now, they started out alone. We thrive on connection. Everyone is willing to talk to you. You just have to put yourself out there. If you just sit back and wait for somebody to come up to you, you're gonna be alone the entire trip. You have to make an effort. If you see somebody or you hear somebody talking about something, go join the conversation. They're going to appreciate it, I promise. They're not gonna think you're weird. Also, who cares what people think? You do you. I mean, if I just waited for people to come up and talk to me, I wouldn't have done anything. You gotta make an effort and you gotta insert yourself. Have confidence, even if you're scared, who cares? Everyone's out here alone. Everyone wants to make new friends. That's the point of travel. So many people just wanna meet new people. I also learned to just go with the flow. Everyone just does what they want when they want. I learned very much that planning does not go well. There was one girl I talked to and it stuck with me. She told me the only thing constant in life is change. Yeah, that's a good one. You gotta be okay with the uncomfortability. So many times I got trapped in another town. I mean, there was one day I tried to go to this town right across the lake. I ended up 30 minutes across the lake by myself. I had no phone service, but instead of freaking out, I was like, you know what? I'm gonna sit here in this new town and explore. And I had a great day by myself. It's all about your perception. It's all about what you make up the stories in your head. You just gotta be okay to go with the flow and see what's happening in that moment. Also, you create your own happiness. There were a couple days where like I was by myself and instead of just self-pitying and being upset that I had no friends and I was by myself in this other country, I was like, you know what? I'm gonna take this day to myself and I'm gonna do what I want. I went and ate by myself. I went and laid out, I swam. Some of my best days were the days that I was completely alone. You create your own happiness. One of my main goals now is to become fluent in Spanish because I realize how privileged I am that I only had to know English my entire life. So many people have to know two or three languages and I've only known English. I mean, I took Spanish when I was a kid, but obviously I didn't care when I was a kid. Now I care. I don't want to have to rely on other people to speak my language. I want to be able to converse with people in their language. I learned that you can't wait on other people to do what you want. If it's your life, you got to do it. Yeah, I didn't want to go to Guatemala by myself at first. I would have loved to go with friends, but I was like, you know what? This is what I want to do. I don't have anybody that'll go with me. It's my life. I have the money. I'm going to go. And I'm so glad I went by myself because half the things that happened to me would not have happened if I wasn't by myself and had to put myself in awkward positions to meet some of the coolest people. But if you wanna do something, just go do it. Don't wait around for other people because you're never gonna do it. It is your life. You can decide what you wanna do. I hope this helped you in some way. My brain is just like going crazy at all the times of always. If you have any more questions, leave them in the comments below. I really, really hope this helped you out. Um, I hope I made sense. Thank you for watching. This is probably so long, but there's a lot of valuable information, I think. At least, you know, I think so. So thank you so much for supporting me. Thank you for watching this. It means so much. Um, let me know what else you wanna see from me. Follow me on Instagram, follow me on TikTok. It's all in the descriptions. Thank you guys for watching. I love you. Bye.